We're going to do a quick little review of the string split method today. So let's uh, start off with some easy ones. Let's take, say we have this string here. So we have a string like that, and we want to split it using the space as a delimiter. And we want to put the different parts into an array. We learned it a while back when we talked about strings and arrays. I want to split this and have an array, have the first element be ABC, the second element be DEF, third element be GHI, and the fourth element be JK. Mr. Borden, sir, do you remember how to split a string? Okay, sir, and then what? Okay, so we need to put the delimiter, and then, is that it, sir? This is a method call, so it's going to return something. What's it going to return? It's going to return an array. What's the array data type string? So it's going to hold a string array, and we can just call it tokens. It's often the when you split apart a string, the individual pieces are called tokens. That's a formal word in computer science. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to print the array, mm -hmm. and I'm going to ask you to write the print uh, method two different ways. So we'll just write inline code. We won't write a separate method. So use a regular for loop and then use a for each loop. Use each of those to print the array. So those are the two different types of for loops I want you to use to print the array. Students are sometimes confused. I mentioned to you that there are only two ways to create an array. One is to use the new keyword, and the other is to use the shortcut operator. It looks like here there's a third way, but that's not really what's happening here. This method is being called. It creates the array inside of its method, and then it returns the array. So that's why it kind of looks like I'm making a brand new array here, but it's being made inside the split method. Uh, Ms. Erda, can you help us with this first for loop? I want to print all the elements in the string. Okay, and what goes in here, Ms. Uh, Ariam? Like that. Let me comment this one out for the moment, and we'll just run this one, see if it works. And you can see there are the four tokens that have been split out here. Now, we can do a similar thing with this for each loop. Ms. Misson, how do I do this one here? This is perfectly fine. A lot of times you'll see writers, uh, authors uh, write it like this. Okay, you'll see that's a common way to write it, but item is fine. And then what do I do here? I think you'll agree with me, this is shorter, easier, easier to read, just generally better structure for printing stuff. Just as a reminder, there are all kinds of restrictions on for each loops. You can't change the array elements, you can't reorder them, you can't, um, you can't do anything to them. You can just inspect them. So let's run this. You'll see we'll get a similar kind of output. So this part here was from the original for loop. This is from the for each loop. And just to kind of finish up here, uh, if we had this and I did this, how many different tokens will there be now? What will they be? I'm telling it that there is no delimiter or empty string is the delimiter. What's going to happen now when it goes to split it? It'll just split every single character. Now, I got to tell you a quick story. So um, there was one particular year, there was one particular year, I forget how many years ago, it was probably like five, six years ago, where I decided to sign up to be a grader for the college board for the CSA. And so they sent me off to uh, Kansas City, uh, uh, Kansas, and uh, I spent an entire week. It was seven days grading. There were a couple of things that I didn't know when I went down there. When you're a grader for the CSA AP exam, you grade the same question every day for eight hours for seven days. So I graded this one question, I forget how many times it was, several hundred times. Anyway, the question that I graded is the question that I am going to give you today for your quiz when you come back after lunch. And I noticed that when I graded it, that of the hundreds of people that I graded, the people that tried to do this problem without using the string split method, not one person got it right, not one. And when they used the string split method to collapse the code and make it much easier, it just became so much easier that almost everyone that used the string split method got it right. Now, technically speaking, string split is not part of our curriculum. However, this is a perfect example where if you just know just a little bit more than is the minimum required, remember, you can use any valid Java on the AP exam FRQs, even if it's not part of the curriculum. If you use it incorrectly, though, the penalties are stiff. But here, by using the string split method, you'll be able to sa save huge amounts of time, and you'll be able to get a much better grade. Now, I don't know if this year's string split is going to show up on your 
test or not. But this is one of those things where minimum investment at time can have a giant, giant impact on your grade. So I think it's definitely worthwhile knowing this one. 